Hi guys. Uh, first of all, I want to congratulate you because I looked at the, the program today and who was in competition with myself for this talk. Uh, we have Wayne Charles downstairs and Hermes. So all of you, in a sense, want to find out about something new, potentially, in the industry. So just a quick question, uh, just to get an idea of the audience. How many people amongst you are retailers? Many are involved in, in, in the logistics carriers? And then the rest, kind of half? So, I'm going to try and get this done in, 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 in 20 minutes. Um, anybody heard of Urbans before in the room? Okay, that's two more than last year, that's good. Um, so, I'm going to try and explain what we do, why we're doing it, uh, our vision, our values, uh, in 20 minutes. Um, and then we have a stand downstairs afterwards as well, so you can get a full demo of the, of the product. My name is Byron Dunn, uh, I'm the General Manager uh, for Urbans in, in Northern Europe. We launched the UK uh, 12 months ago now, so we're quite new here. And today I'm going to talk to you about the jaded last mile, because to be honest, every uh, piece of noise that we hear in the market, every piece of news that we hear in the market, we've heard it before, everybody's doing everything in the market, but what's not approved is the last mile, okay? Uh, so I'm here to explain to you why, if you retake really control of your delivery operations, there is a chance for the last mile, okay? Um, so just to uh, give you a bit of background about Urbans. Um, company founded in 2015 out of uh, Brussels. We're a tech company. Um, it's basically co-founders had their own businesses in terms of logistics, physical logistics in Paris. Uh, one was an engineer involved uh, for a big logistics company uh, uh, in, in Brussels. And one was an IT consultant. So they came together in 2015 and said, there's something to be done here to improve the delivery experience in the last mile for most notably grocery retailers. We delivered or we uh, processed 14 million tasks uh, in 2019, a task being a delivery or a drop-off. Uh, we've roughly 110 clients varying in size. We're across 10 countries now, the most uh, recent country being, being Ireland. Um, we operate core of our business out of France and the Benelux region and we're also quite present in the Middle East. 500% growth uh, in 2018 and we're roughly 40 employees. Where we want to go this year is we're just coming out of a Series A fundraising which will enable us to grow to 80 people this year and expand into different countries, most notably the US. We have a subset of international clients, some of whom you might recognize, some of whom you might not recognize. Um, what I suggest is I'm going to go through the presentation and come back to this slide to explain exactly what we do. Okay. Um, these clients are based in those 10 countries I mentioned and every question that everybody asks today, who do you work with in the UK, who do you work with in Ireland, the many references that you have. Finally, we have uh, under a non-disclosure agreement uh, our first customers in the UK and our first customer in Ireland, which we'll come back to afterwards. So to introduce Urbans, I want to talk about urban logistics. Okay? And urban logistics, uh, depending on which department you're working on in the company, can be a real headache. Okay? Um, there's multiple key stakeholders in urban logistics at the moment, and as we saw in the Stuart presentation uh, just beforehand, um, it can be quite difficult to process that, process that information internally and to put an importance on that particular um, part of the, uh, the process. Uh, usually when we hear the last mile, how, much can you, how many parts can you deliver, what's your volume, what's the margin, who are you delivering with, uh, all these type of percentages. Let's just take a look at urban population growth, for instance. In 1960, 34% of the total population lived in urban zones. In 2014, sorry, 2004, 2014, 54% of that population lived in urban zones. So in the space of 55 years, um, we've grown by substantially into 20%. In 2030, they predict that 75% of the global population are going to live in urban zones. Okay, and that has a direct impact on your business. It has a direct impact for the carriers, it has a direct impact for retailers. Okay, because all of the habits they're currently generating, as we see in urban zones, we're going to multiply that and add 20% more people into those uh, economies. Okay? That has a direct impact on traffic in urban zones. Okay? So as you can see from here, 78% of the actual traffic created in urban zones is by cars. Okay? We can see that 16% of that is vans, and 5% of that is trucks. So we could say that 21% of the total traffic created in urban zones at the moment is created by something to do in relation to delivery. Okay? And that's also a figure to take into consideration uh, because with, in the advent of e-commerce, which we're going to talk about later on, that is going to grow. The cars are going to reduce, naturally, with the uh, no, low emission zones that are being put in place in 
um, London in the likes of Paris at the moment. But the only way to succeed in the last mile, to get those e-commerce parcels or e-commerce pages to customers, is to increase the amount of ways of delivering that to customers, whether that be through vans, uh, trucks, and naturally bikes, because there's 1% which is missing there, which represents the bikes. So moving on to delivery. Delivery in the UK at the moment, in 2018, there was 3.5 billion parcels delivered. Okay? Year on year growth, that represents 12.4%. <coughs> the average <coughs> parcels delivered per person in the UK in 2018 was 53. The global average is 23. If you can imagine, based on the previous slides, that the growth in urban population is going to grow by 20% substantially by 2030, and you're already double that of the global average in terms of the amount of parcels delivered. You can only imagine the impact that that's going to have on traffic and the potential future of your roles within the company and how to manage that last mile to deliver those products. 68 billion is the number of delivery miles travelled in the UK in 2019. 68 billion. Okay? Now I'm not going to go into the carbon emissions speech like every single carrier who's downstairs is going to go into uh, and tell you uh, about how they're going to become carbon neutral quite quickly. But 68 billion, if we could just assess a part of that 68 billion and get those parcels and get those delivery drivers working in a more efficient way while taking into consideration uh, what the consumer wants, well then it's a win for everybody. The retailers, the carriers and, and the brands. Let's move on to retail. <coughs> E-commerce is sucking diesel. Okay? And it's funny with this slide, I sent it to the marketing team and they replaced it with a, a car with diesel coming out of it. And they didn't understand because they were in Brussels and they didn't understand that I want to present that e-commerce is actually literally sucking diesel in terms of how much it's growing. So it represents 23% of total sales. It's predicted to grow to 28% by 2023. But don't forget that eight pounds out of every 10 pounds spent, roughly, is still spent in store. So with this massive growth coming from e-commerce, <clears throat> there's still a lot of being, our money being spent in store, so we have to try and find solutions for the people who are shopping in store as well. As we know, 2,900 high street store closers in H1 2019 in the UK on prime location space. What does that mean? Is it all doom and gloom? No, it's just it's a, cha it's a change in habits, it's a change in, in consumer behaviour, but how can we manage that better? Coming on to the last mile. Last mile there's a lot of noise, and the reason I wanted to talk to you today is because we deal with noise on a permanent basis, and no doubt as retailers you have it up to here, hearing about the last mile, how we're going to improve the last mile, what we're going to do to improve your operations, etc, etc. We hear it as well on a day-to-day -day basis, and nobody really deep dives into the actual facts behind the last mile. What are you doing in the last mile? If you ask somebody who doesn't work in logistics, or if you ask even somebody who works in the logistics, they're going to talk to you about drones. Did you see Amazon are doing this? They're going to be able to deliver to you by a drone soon in London. Electric vehicles, CO2, Pudos, trucks, robots, Amazon Prime, click and collect, Uberization, emissions, lockers, droids, crowdsource delivery. And look in that word mess there, how many of those are actually part of the last mile today? When do you think that one of the big retailers is going to be able to deliver your shopping by a drone into your back garden? Realistically. May come. If you read the press, you tell it's nearly tomorrow. It's not going to come in the next five years. Do you think that people are going to get delivered by drones into, into their gardens or into their front doorstep or into their flat within the next five years? I'd love to see it. But the reality is that the capacity of the market to do that and the change that would involve, you won't be able to deal with that. Droids or semi-autonomous ground vehicles. Have you seen how people drive? Can you imagine one of those driving around the centre of Dublin, the centre of London, the centre of Paris? You go to pick up your parcel, the thing is going off, you're running after it to try and get your parcel, he goes into the back of a truck. You know, it's just not going to happen. It's not going to happen within the next five years. But what's important is we're talking about five years. It might happen in ten years, and I'd love to see it. But in five years, in ten years, are you going to be in your job? Are you going to be in that specific company? That's the question we need to ask. And what can we do now to change the way you're managing the last month? 
My noisy, noisy neighbours, I work with them as well. We work with a lot of carriers as well. But just today we're talking about retailers. These are different things that we read in the press about the last mile. By the end of 2021, 10% of our fleet in the UK will be electric. Brilliant. And we'll be all, we're getting awards at the events and you know, everybody's getting an award for that. That represents 550 vehicles. Okay? Their total fleet in Europe is 37,000 vehicles. Is that worth an award? I don't know. We will become a carbon neutral carrier. Okay, it's a bit vague, but you know, everybody would love to become a carbon neutral carrier. But how do you become a carbon neutral carrier? And when can you become a carbon neutral carrier? We are working with local government and other logistic service providers such as DHL and DPT to analyze under which conditions the use of cargo bikes can be even more efficient than the conventional vehicles for the, for the... What does that mean? You're working with this and we're going to look at cargo bikes. Can you imagine having to replace the whole fleet with bikes to deliver parcels or groceries? Is that going to happen? Part of it, yes, but is it going to happen? What's that represent for the last mile? We deliver directly from the store by bike within a 10 mile radius, greener and faster. Customers can change their delivery destination up to 30 minutes before the delivery window. That's great, and that's brilliant. And out of all of that, that's probably the most excellent quote I've heard. But how, does it, how do you incorporate that into your whole business, given the volumes of parcels that you're delivering, and given the volumes of goods you're delivering? So moving on, how do we link this to technology? Ben Dunn from Accenture, namesake, has a great quote. Retailers face problems because many of them are still using legacy delivery carriers who have not enhanced their systems and operations to provide the required visibility and flexibility to customers. That is a fact. The solutions that are in place have been in place for 10 to 15 years. They were built to solve problems 10 to 15 years ago. The urban population, as we saw earlier, has grown drastically. Consumer behavior has grown drastically. They're buying more online. So how can we use a tool that was developed 15 years ago to manage that particular problem? It's pretty much impossible, and they're breaking. It's time for our retailers to regain control. So how do we explain at our advance how retailers can regain control? It's quite simple. On the pyramid, in terms of the hierarchy of control, if we look at it from the bottom to top, you have control over your management. You can control what management do internally within your company to manage that last mile. So that's the immediate effect you can have on the company. You have control over drivers. A little less control over the drivers than you have over management, and depending on if you subcontract out your deliveries or not. But you have control over the drivers. It just, you just have to believe it. Your customers. You have control over your customers. You have the power to control your customers. You just have to believe it. Government. That's why it's the last one there. You have very little control over government. Okay? And we're not going to talk about government today because ourselves we have very little uh, to offer government at the moment. But that's what we come up with the last mile retail hierarchy of control. What can you control today in the last mile? Needs. Needs in the market. Solid route planning and optimization. Innovation, simple technology that integrates with your current technology. Centralized, accurate delivery data and feeds. Clean address data. Digitalized paper, whether that be proof of delivery, billing, etc. Improve, improve customer satisfaction. Fully integrated systems with order management systems, ERPs. It's not, gonna be, it's not a headache. And clarity. Everybody needs clarity. I've met nobody that said to me, I don't want clarity. So we concentrate on management, driver, and customers, and this is a mix on a very macro level of what they need. What is the solution? The solution that we built, Urbans provides retailers with all of the delivery technology needed to efficiently deliver their customers in the last month. Tomorrow, if you put Urbans in place, and you're capable of having that data in real time on the delivery, on the customer, on the driver, I'm sure that a lot of you would jump on it. Now, we're not going to talk about the complexities of that for the moment, but that, in a nutshell, is why we created Urbans 2015. We have one module, and we three, sorry, three modules, and each module corresponds to one of the elements in the hierarchy of control. The first module is the back office and the brains of Urbans. So generally, the people who are in the room here today, you have access to this module. 
You can plan and optimize your routes. You have multi-retailer man management and multi-subcontractor management. You have order management, multi-fleet management. You have real-time ETAs and delay flow management. You have real-time visibility on delivery operations. You have alerts, messages, notifications, and SMS as a standard. You can secure user access with administration rights, depending on who you're dealing with, the, the carrier, the sender, or in fact, internally. You complete delivery log management, rules and constraints management, and a learning capacity around an address book. So we're assessing the problems that we've seen in the last mile that are causing a lot of the problems and the prices to raise, that are part of the raising prices. That's a control tower. That data, we take data in from existing ERP system, order management systems, Metapack for example, we analyze that data with our own algorithms and whether it's an in-house fleet or an outsourced fleet, we push those rounds out to those customers. It goes well beyond just simply analyzing historical traffic data. What's important for us is what the customer thinks, not how much necessary, what the customer, what the customer thinks, and then in, incorporated into that is all of the economies of scale that we can gain by having that data in real time. The second module and how we're linked to the drivers, which is the second uh, part of the control, is the application. So we've developed a very simple EPOD track and trace and navigation <coughs> system. Real-time interaction between drivers, dispatchers, and customers. Can you imagine as a logistics or a supply chain or a customer success manager having access to that information real-time where Byron's parcel or shopping is at any given time? Real-time street-by-street navigation for drivers. Driver automated workflows and scheduling. Managing internal and subcontracted drivers as well. So that's not a blocking point. Driver checklists, proof of delivery. Returns management, scanning, white label solution. So your dry, the driver who's working for you is going to deliver for your brand and not for the carrier. Customer experience is the third model key, key core element of the solution. We're bringing the, the customer service part but further upstream in the solution. Directly send personalized email and SMS, manual automatically. By the way, people talk downstairs, you think that that is actually the standard in the market, but if you deep dive into what they're actually doing, it's not the standard in the market at the moment. Real-time estimated times of arrival, which is key. You can give 30-minute delivery windows to your customer, and you can decide who gets 30 minutes, who gets an hour, who gets two hours, based on the size of the customer, the importance of the customer, or the customer that you, or the customer on the B2B side that you're delivering for. You have your driver approaching alerts. You have your driver weight, uh, ratings, surveys, etc., to gather that information in real time back from the customer. And you have a branded customer experience. The process that we've drawn up here gives you an example of how for a retailer that could work. Integrating the management headquarters into the optimization process and distribution centers and running out your last mile delivery, whether that be in-house fleet or subcontracted fleet, whether you're running ship from store, Airbus gives you the capacity to run those flows. The state of play in 2020. <coughs> If we just take this example of the NBA, this is the analysis of 200 shop locations between 2001 versus 2019, 2020. And I think it's quite interesting because I think it represents as well what's going on in the last mile. In 2001, 2002, obviously NBA had, um, they had analysis, they had stats, they had programs in place telling players, telling teams where they needed to shoot from, where the averages are, and where they're gonna score from. And somebody back then told them, this is gospel. This will never change. Our solution, is our solution is telling you to do this. And then managers change from teams, players change from teams. This is how it was done there, so we need to do the same. Somewhere in that 20-year period, things changed. And now if we look at it, somewhere, somewhere, some uh, application or some statistics have come along to say that it's better that we go for shots at three, and more focus on the basket, then and get rid of the, um, the average shots that are coming in just from around the basket, because we obviously have a lot more chance of scoring if we're closer to the basket, and the risk analysis has been done so we can get three points for shooting outside the circle. So somebody along the way took the risk and said that, yes, this is going to change. We're creating a new standard. 
Why can't this exist in the last mile for retailers? Why can't retailers regain control? Why can't retailers start running their own delivery operations? If the customer experience is gospel, why can't they start saying, okay, we're gonna change the way we're operating. Okay, we've done this for 20 years. This is the way that it's been done. How can we change this in 2020 to score more points? Couple of takeaways. Act now to regain control of the last mile. Software can help, but it's only one ingredient in the mix. Okay? You will be left behind if you don't act now. Shippers do not represent your brand. Don't expect them to deliver a branded experience. They do a lot of marketing noise for their brand, not yours. Customers are shipper agnostic. They don't care who delivers their parcel, as long as it's delivered cheaply, on time, and it's completely frictionless. Talk to Urbans, we're downstairs, we're trying to change the way uh, retailers are operating their last mile. Uh, it's time 34, and I'd be delighted to run you through a demo uh, to show you exactly what I'm talking about in practice. Thank you very much.